Well, hello again from St. James's Park. Yeah, it's pretty quiet in here now. Thankfully, the lights are still on, and that's because preparations are already underway for Wednesday's visit of Paris Saint-Germain. They'll be training here on Tuesday, and I'll be back here uh, too then to bring you a little bit of a sneak preview of Kylian Mbappe out there, out there on the St. James's pitch. But before that, we've got a lot to unpick from today's 2-0 victory for Newcastle over Burnley uh, and the only place to start is with, the, is with the injury news. Now we've just left Eddie Howe downstairs there in his press conference and while he was pleased obviously with large parts of the performance, we'll come on to that more, uh, and delighted with the, the results and another clean sheet of fifth on the spin now, his body language and his demeanour was tempered slightly by, uh, by injuries and a lot of questions about injuries because Newcastle have come into this one uh, already without Callum Wilson, who's got a hamstring problem, and Sven Botman, who's got a knee issue. A little bit more news on that uh, in a second. But first of all, and I'll link the mail story uh, in the description below and put it on screen now, Joe Linton was lost in this game and he'd only come on in the second half. He lasted three and a half minutes before he was forced off with what Eddie's just told us as a hamstring concern and again I said you know you can just tell by Eddie's demeanour and the words he used he used the phrase you know huge blow could be a huge blow for them and I and you would go along with that because we know just how important he is to the team he came back in on Wednesday night against Manchester City and for the first time I thought this season he looked free of injury in the last few games before uh, the knee problem was confirmed following the last international break he didn't look like the same player he did out there on Wednesday against City. Now why did he why did he come on tonight? Uh, he came on because Eddie Howe needed to say out the game and I've seen one or two comments as to you know it was a needless substitution. In the context of the match it wasn't and yes while Newcastle were in control and uh, overall you reflect on an easy victory they'd made hard work of it to that point because by that I mean if Newcastle or the two or three or four goals in front that they should have been come the 64th minute or, or whatever it was Joe Linton probably doesn't have to come on but he had to come on because he just looked at it and I think Eddie probably thought the same and it was only one goal uh, Newcastle in the second half didn't really look like adding a second you know all of the chances really were in the first half until they've then got the belated second goal in the 77th minute and even that was through a penalty so uh, yeah Joe Linton's come on for me when he probably shouldn't have had to if Newcastle had done the job they played well enough to achieve because they're looking at being without Joe Linton now if it is a hamstring problem what are they there two three four weeks so probably won't see Joe Linton until after the international break and to not have him uh, in the side for Newcastle against PSG and then away down at West Ham a West Ham match last season down there where he was so instrumental in victory he was tremendous that, that night I just think it is you know to, to echo Eddie's words a huge blow for Newcastle other news on that front Sven Botman a knee problem uh, I tweeted before the game that we won't see him until after the international break at least a few weeks is the word I was getting back to me Eddie's just confirmed that there now and without Botman in the team now Newcastle weren't really massively troubled there today defensively you could look at that and say well actually you know Jamal Lascelles has come in against Man City and he's come in again then he's done well of course he has but you know let's not forget that when Sven Botman is there it makes it makes a huge huge difference and coming up against real top quality opposition on Wednesday against PSG and then down there the West Ham team have won there again today and they've got some brilliant informed forwards with the likes of Antonio and Jared Bowen I think Eddie Howe and, and you guys would want Sven Botman in there. I think that's a, I think that's big. I really do. Callum Wilson. Now Wilson's injury. I hinted this in yesterday's video. I was told yesterday that Wilson probably wouldn't feature today, so it's proven. But I've been told he's not. He's not injured. He's just got a slight concern. He's able to be out there on the grass and kick a ball about. But there's just something which is, which is preventing him from playing here today. And. The concern you would have with Wilson is when these little things start, the hamstrings, the calves, the thighs, they, they, they normally stay there and for a year now, since the World Cup basically, Callum Wilson's last injury was actually away at the World Cup with England. Since then, Eddie has found a way to keep him fit, to keep him firing, to keep him hungry. He's been fantastic. Now, if there is a slight hamstring there, it's kept him out today and the word is he's, he's again a doubt for Wednesday against PSG, then yeah, that's a that's a worry because I thought Isaac who another one who come into today with a slight issue I don't think he looked at his best there today Alexander Isaac and if he is 
uh, it, it, it is very best and it's very sharpish. Newcastle, Newcastle are probably, you know, two or three nil up by the time the, you know, by the time he actually does get his goal. So yeah, there are concerns there already added to, you know, issues such as Joe Willock who remains out and now a suspension for Anthony Gordon too. And Eddie didn't seem best pleased with that. He called Gordon's booking needless. It was for kicking the ball away. Now, I, I don't know if I've got sympathy with Gordon or not. I was sat uh, just in that seat there in the press box and. Gordon, it was, it was just in front of us there on the Melbourne stand touchline. He said he didn't hear the whistle, he ran on with the ball and, and kicked the ball away. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Eddie, Eddie didn't seem best pleased. It means Gordon now misses the trip down to West Ham next weekend. Of course, he can play against PSG on Wednesday. But, you know, Eddie, Eddie made the point, it's a valid one. Anthony Gordon's next league match now is three weeks away. And when you're in such a good vein of form as he is, and we'll come on to his performance, that's a, that's a blow because it does just halt momentum a little bit. And we've seen with Anthony Gordon that what is the difference between last season and this while well, he's been in the team it's training it's playing it's that word it's the key word again you know momentum he's got that and it's going to a place like West Ham without Anthony Gordon without Joe Linton without Sven Botman and I said in the video yesterday I thought the, uh, that that game would just be a true marker of where Newcastle are truly at in terms of determining whether or not they are called back now what did today tell us about Newcastle uh, they start slowly in the first 10 minutes I thought it was almost similar to Sheffield United last week but uh, when you're playing a team as insipid as Sheffield United or as insipid as Burnley are I mean they really are sort of uh, you know, naive purists I wrote my match report mail on Sunday match report again in the link below you know you might get 10 passes and a pat on the back uh, from the manager and training but it counts for absolutely nothing come a Saturday and I just thought they had a chance there against Newcastle bearing in mind as I see Newcastle were slow out of the box they had a chance to do something and put themselves in front and you just looked at them and thought, well, wow, that, that's never going to happen. And uh, once Newcastle recovered from that start and the opening goal, actually, what it probably was against the runner player to a degree, uh, when Almiron puts it in the top corner and what a, what a goal it was. But from then on, Newcastle are in control. They're the better team. But they just they were still made harder work of it than Eddie Howe would have liked a harder work than they would have had to bearing in mind it did take until the 77th minute to score that second goal now just to go back to Almiron's goal you can't just gloss over a finish like that can you uh, it owes everything to Kieran Trippier Aaron Ramsey is dozy in possession really I don't know what he was thinking of we'll never know because <laughs> Kieran Trippier come and picked his pocket Almiron gets his head up and puts it in the uh, puts it in the top is the goal gone oh the goal's gone puts it in what was a top corner uh, <laughs> the Lisa's end and that's his second and two games now and the one good thing about Almiron is that we we tend to see his goals come in batches and you know once he discovers that that, that hot streak he tends to stay hot for a, for a little while so Eddie will be hoping that this is a, a signal of something to come from him because they're going to need it without Joe Linton without Gordon without Harvey Barnes you know Almiron now is going to be a starter over the next few so so yeah but then but then from there they 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 have chances to play well of course they play well and there's lots of individual performances and you know I've already touched on Trippier there wow he's just a he's just a class act this now he's been and I've said it before he's been you know arguably one of the most important signings in the club's history and he's played well since the minute he walked in I think he's playing now in the last three four five games better than he ever has done and he's up against Kylian Mbappe on Wednesday night. I can't wait for that. That's going to be absolutely fascinating. But before then, uh, other performances today. And listen, this this might as well lead into my into my uh, merit marks, my stars. Now, I'll just go straight to the top. Three stars, and I've deliberated over this, and we've spoke about it downstairs in the press room. Who was man of the match? I'm going to give it to Bruno Gamares. It was a really close call, but I thought that today was, was head and shoulders on the back of an excellent second half against City when he came on and changed the game on Wednesday night. That today there was his best 90 minutes of the season, probably even extending into the, the, the latter part of last season as well, when I thought from the cup final onwards he, he wasn't as, as good as he had been. But today uh, it was his ball that sent Alexander Isak clear that pass from the corner when Isak should have probably made a 2-0 in the first half. I thought he put himself about. He looked physically better for a player who, for me, hasn't been moving properly this season. He suddenly seemed free of whatever shackles it was that were that were holding him back. He, he got around the pitch. He was inventive. He was bright. He was aggressive. He, w he was everything we know Bruno can be. So for me, uh, and it's in the context of where he's come from, I just thought for me that today there said, yeah, Bruno, uh, Bruno's back. Uh, three stars for Bruno. Two, now where do I go with the two? Uh, I should be given this more thought because there's so many contenders. I'm gonna go two, two, 
uh, Sean Longstaff. And I say that because Longstaff's come back into the team now and that was a fifth consecutive clean sheet and a fifth game without defeat. Now, he's just making such a difference and there was one little incident just down there on the touch, uh, right at the, the, the corner there in the first half where he's had no right to, to close on the full back like he did. He's charged him down and he's actually ended up winning and blocking the, blocking the clearance. He's won a throw in for his own team. The whole stadium lay up and there's just little instances like that that are capturing what what Sean is bringing to the team I thought he was I thought he was brilliant again today uh, and it I use the phrase all the time it's no coincidence Newcastle have picked up since he came back in uh, so Sean gets the two stars and the one star there was a few contenders here uh, it could have been Trippier I've already just spoken about him it could have been Miguel Almiron but no I'm going to give it to Gordon Anthony Gordon, he won the uh, he won the penalty, which ultimately settled the game. And I just thought he actually grew into it. He looked fitter and faster and stronger as the game as the game went on after a little bit of a slow start. And I just think the the form he is in at the moment, Gordon and Longstaff are having the the, the, the greatest impact on the air, on the side. You now coupled with Trippier, who you know, oh, go on, I'll give Trippier one star as well because I just thought he was, I thought he was terrific today and he set up the, uh, he set up the opening goal. So yeah, it's a double one star. So yeah, overall, Newcastle were, were good, they were professional, but they could have made life easier for themselves. But I lied to that, there were some very good, encouraging individual performances. The, the footnote, the negative is the injuries, which I led this, this video with for obvious reasons. So... But it does leave them, uh, confidence-wise, you'd say it leaves them in a good place going into Wednesday uh, back here against PSG. And every now and again, you know, you need these sorts of afternoons. Uh, if Newcastle are going to three wins on the spin now, if they are going to reclaim the Premier League and get back to where I think they, they should be uh, in the table, you need a 2-0 victory at home to Burnley. Uh, now, I wouldn't call it routine. Eddie said himself it wasn't routine afterwards. Uh, but, but yeah, it, it's as close as you, as you do get to it, even allowing for the fact that I thought it should have been a, a 3 or 4-0 victory come the end. So, uh, well, probably won't be 3 or 4-0. Uh, and if it is, we'll be talking about probably a night to rival uh, Barcelona and all the rest of it is when they come back here uh, against Paris this week. And what a, what a prospect that promises to be. I'm just going to point you quickly to an article I wrote for the Daily Mail today where uh, we decided to look ahead early to the arrival of Mbappe. And the question I was asked during the week was, can Newcastle United one day sign Kylian Mbappe? And the piece I wrote for the Mail with Mbappe mocked up in a Newcastle shirt uh, spoke to that. And I mean, go and click on it. I won't tell you the whole thing, but you know, the, 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 the overriding sort of uh, theme of the piece was well well maybe one day yeah not now you know not now but there's only a, a handful of clubs actually can afford to sign Kylian Mbappe and three four five years down the line when he's making his next move be that from PSG or Real Madrid more likely uh, why wouldn't you guys be be one of the clubs in the mix and to that end what happens here on Wednesday could have a little bit of a say in terms of planting that seed in the in the piece I talk about at Recliver in 2003, the last time a Champions League group match was played here was the night Cliver was serenaded and clapped from the pitch. Well, at that point, you know, he was his country's record goal scorer. He just scored 25 times in the last three seasons for Barca. No one ever imagined he would be a Newcastle player. Uh, but what happened that night from the, from the home crowd stuck and within 16 months, yeah, he'd signed for Newcastle. I mean, the less said about what actually how he actually did in Newcastle's colours, probably the better. But but not nonetheless, uh, you know this stadium has reserved really special receptions for opposition players on occasion. And it was the question I asked you guys last week: Do you want to see Mbappe play? And uh, that was on the back of his little injury scare. And the 90 95 percent of the answers were yes. That's you know you guys want to see the best players here, and you also want them to to see you. And I just think Wednesday promises to be such a brilliant occasion on so many levels i can't wait before then we've got tuesday like i said at the top of the video and i'll be in here with my selfie stick in my camera watching clean and back be a train uh, for psg so so yeah guys again keep watching uh, keep reading so much great interaction the last few days all the comments uh you know all, all the views it really is much uh, much appreciated 
thank you again for watching this time uh again click on the links below and please like please hit subscribe and i'll see you again in what is it yeah 72 hours okay take care bye bye